The Parliamentary Committee probing the closure of banks has heard that since 27th January 2017, DFCU Bank has paid 98 billion shillings out of the 200 billion. It agreed with Bank of Uganda to buy Crane Bank. Chair, I, I... Evidence tabled before the Committee on Commissions, Statutory Authorities and State Enterprises shows that Bank of Uganda gave DFCU two and a half years to pay the 200 billion without interest. However, MPs questioned why Corato Security for the loans of Crane Bank indicated in the bad book as of 20th October worth 570 billion had reduced to 200 billion by 27th January 2017. This is more or less like a loaning. Somebody is holding money, your money. So it should attract interest. Naturally, it should attract interest because he's holding your money. If DFC, you could borrow this 200 billion to take over all the requirements of Crane Bank. Why couldn't the same gesture be extended to Crane Bank to sort out its problems? It's not that DFCU had the cash. It's an obligation, yes, from DFCU to, to pay Bank of Uganda. But what is the source? It doesn't have the cash as it starts out on this transaction. Because the source of the 200 billion is the non performing portfolio, which is written off. It also emerged that Bank of Uganda relied on an inventory report done by PricewaterhouseCoopers and on the assets evaluation report done by DFCU Bank to sell Crane Bank assets to DFCU. However, according to Section 95, Subsection 3 of the Financial Institutions Act, it's only Bank of Uganda mandated to carry out value assessment of the assets of a financial institution before selling it. The inventory report that was done by Peter Rusi, who we are hired by Bank of Uganda, in our view, was a valuation report. Between October and January, the assets and liabilities of the institution cannot remain the same. That is why you are required to do a valuation before you dispose of these assets. My answer to this is that the assets of a bank were valued in an inventory report as of 20th October. The method of valuation is stated in the regulations. Meanwhile, former Bank of Uganda Executive Director for Commercial Bank Supervision, Justin Bajenda, has written to the committee seeking leave to travel abroad for the Christmas holiday and says this is to request you to release the above mentioned passport which I deposited with the OCCID Parliament on the 3rd of December to enable me arrange my Christmas holiday travels out of the country. The committee is examining the actions of the central bank in closing seven commercial banks and selling off their assets between 1993 and 2017. The probe arose as a result of a special audit by the Auditor General that showed irregularities uh, in the bank closures and the sale of assets. Habad Ziwa, NTV at Parliament.